That's like a big spider. I know it's a big spider, but look that he's building a massive cool computer. Yeah. Is it cool? Yeah. It's me on there. It's you and that over yes. there? Yes. It is? Yes. Yay. <laughs> what do you think this is? To blow wind. To blow wind. Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. I am very excited about this build because it's going to look absolutely gorgeous. So, without any further ado, let's jump right into the video and let's start this build right after this. Shopping online, trying to find the best deals is just hard work. Spending hours on trying to find the coupon codes to save money. Oh, what if there was a faster and better way to do this? And there is. Here's where today's sponsor Honey comes in. Honey is a free browser extension that searches the internet to find the promo codes for you and applies them automatically. And it can also tell you when it's a good time or a bad time to buy a certain product. So here's how Honey works. It is super simple, just two simple clicks. Okay, go to joinhoney.com forward slash tech notice. Then on that browser, you can see a button that says join Honey, click on that, and then you are all done. You can add it to whatever browser you are using. Once you are done and Honey has been installed, all you have to do is just watch Honey do the hard work for you. When checking out online, Honey is gonna find a coupon code for you. And then if he finds one, all you have to do is just see the price drop and enjoy the good deal. For example, I found a nice sofa here in the UK on Groupon, already discounted. I was wondering if Honey can give me an even better deal. And then I pressed the Honey button and believe it or not, Honey saved me £20 off already discounted sofa. How cool is that? So why don't you join Honey today before you start doing the holiday season shopping? Go to joinhoney.com forward slash tech notice. I'll leave a link in the description as well if you want to just click on that. It's all fine. The best thing is it's completely free for you. So joinhoney.com forward slash tech notice. Thanks, Honey, for sponsoring this video. So a few things that we are going to do in the beginning of the build. We're going to take out the power supply first. So we've got a few things over here. By the way, if you want to know the parts or what parts I'm using, oops, I'm going to leave everything in the description below so you can check out what parts we're using. I'm not going to do a massive intro of all the parts that we're using because that will be boring. Everything's in the description. And if you watch the video, you're going to see all the parts being used. So there's no point of doing that. So our power supply, 1000 watt Corsair supply, okay? This guy means business. Let's take it out over here. Little sniff. Oof. You can probably get high on that stuff. And why do we do this? This is just to earth ourselves, but kind of a little cowboy way, cowboy way of earthing ourselves. Um, we're going to leave this on the side because soon we're going to need it again. If we're going to plug it into the mains, plug that in over here and turn it on, boom. Now, when we touch this, in essence, we should be actually earthed and, you know, whatever static we have built up should go. In ideal way, you can have like a wrist band with a wire going to the table leg or to the power supply, that would be ideal, but ain't nobody got time for that. <sighs> Let's open up the motherboard. We're gonna take it out. And this is Aorus. X570 Ultra that we're going to use over here. Whoa. <laughs> Look at the stickers you get with this. Wow. So if you're a fan of stickers, uh, there's a whole book of stickers for you. And even a metal one. Wow, they really put some effort on the stickers. What we want is the uh, manual, user manual over here. Definitely need that. Always go to use the user manual as well. And let's see what else we're gonna need. There's few uh, straps over here, which is good. We might use them later on. Gigabyte G connector. I'm not sure if we're gonna need this or not, but so there is few um, N.2 screws and things like that. So we're gonna put these on the side because we're gonna all need them all. Maybe need the extensions as well. This is the Wi-Fi antenna because 
This motherboard has Wi-Fi built in. Oh, there's another standoff for the M.2s. We're not going to need that at first, so I'm going to leave that inside here with this uh, G connector because I'm not sure if we're going to use this. This is one of those builds that I'm not actually sure how this is going to end up because I'm kind of doing it first myself as well. So you can just learn and even if you're more capable and you know how these PC builds do, at least you can just learn how to do something new over here. There is some cables over here, SATA cables, and I think this is the RGB cable. Yeah, 12 volt RGB. We are not going to need any of these SATA cables we don't need, and we don't need any of these. Now take off the motherboard from this um, plastic sleeve. And how I'm always taking the motherboard is out is I'm gonna slide my hand in, and with these fingers, I'm going to grab hold of the plate that's on the back of the motherboard. So I'm going to take it out so you know what I mean. And then with the other one, I'm holding from one of these VRAM coolers. So I'm not actually touching any of these clips. So if you look on the back of the motherboard, can you see where I'm holding this? I'm not actually touching the motherboard. I'm just holding onto this back plate of the process pack plate. And there we go. Once you've done that, slide, put the motherboard on the box. So... There we go. Last time I made a mistake, put it on this plastic bag, but that is not a good idea. The cool thing about this iFixit case is because there's some space on the bottom over there. I'm just gonna put all these screws in there for now. Mm. And magnetic back over here. We start with the processor. With the processor, you're gonna open up this and inside this, there is no cooler. So all you're gonna get is this little thing and heck of a lot of packaging. <laughs> there's nothing else in there. It's just all foam, full of foam. This is all that you need. If you don't know how this uh, process installation goes, I'm going to go through step by step everything. So even if you're more advanced and you know how this works, so well done. But if you don't know, we're going to go step by step so anyone can build this computer. Okay, if you choose to do this. And even if you want to choose some of the opt out for some of the lower specs or a bit higher specs or things like that, you know, of the parts that you can find in the description. This socket is AM4 socket, and this is a Ryzen 3950X processor. 16 core, 32 thread, absolute beast of a guy. So on the side over here, there is a little corner on this side. I don't know if you can see this. On this corner, which is um, if you have the motherboard this way, then there is a little triangle in this corner over here. And there is a triangle also on the processor over here if you can see on this this side over here there is a little triangle so this triangle and that need to go together before you do that don't forget to open up the socket push this metal kind of pole on the side a little bit and then it comes up and all you have to do is push it up like that the socket moves a little bit and now it's open we're gonna open this one and then hold it from the sides don't touch the IHS that's what it's called. The processor pins on the bottom over here and IHS is this bit over here. Don't touch that one because we don't want any finger crease on it over there. And all you do is just slide it in. Drops in, yeah, it drops in. And then we're gonna close the socket. Boom, that's it. The processor is installed. By the way, this little LED over there is representation of the color theme of this. Now, we're not gonna go straight into the cooler. What we're going to do first is doing the RAM first because um, it's gonna be a bit harder to install the cooler when you've, uh, the RAM when you've already got the cooler installed. So take out all our RAM. We have 128 gigabytes of Patriot Viper memory. This is DDR4, 32 megahertz. 3200 megahertz sorry 3200 megahertz speed um, snappy memory and loads of it okay so because we have four sticks so all of these sockets will be occupied it doesn't really matter which slots are we going to occupy but if you don't know which one you should occupy first then in here on the motherboard there is a little guide over here so if you start from the processor side over here this is a1 a2 b1 and b2 slots okay so there we go uh, if you only have two memory sticks then you're going to start from the very furthest of the outside of the processor so we go all the way to this side this is usually like the golden rule you start this and every other so this one and then that one the middle one okay very further away and this one or 
there is a little guide over here as well, which is A2 and B2. If this is still confusing, and there is also the motherboard that you can always check things and, um, you know, if you don't know how this works. But what we're going to do is open up every single socket over here. Perfect. So they kind of slide sideways. Boom, 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 boom. All four of them. And then let's take this RAM. So it's also a good idea with these RAM sticks not to touch these gold pins. That's like a general rule over here because any bit of grease or little whatever you have on your hands can short out the pieces of the computer. But there is little opening in on the RAM over here and that needs to line up with this middle bit over here. So just see which way it's going to go. Okay. It can't go two ways because the opening is, you know, only closer one way. So I can see it goes this way and I'm going to start putting the RAM in from the very outsides. Okay. And then press straight down. It's going to take quite a lot of power and then you're going to hear a click like this. Okay. See that took a little bit pressure actually from both sides to get it in. And then you do it four times. So all this RAM is now plugged in. Look at that. Next of all, we're going to install the M.2 SSDs over here. So there are three slots on the motherboard and you can see you can screw them out from this side and we have three M.2 drives as well. So we have two that are liquid cool. This one doesn't come like this from the factory. It comes blue like this on the box. So if you want to know how to change the liquid, check out the other video on the channel. I'm going to link it up there where we change this and how you can change the liquids. Basically, you can make this liquid any color you want. These are liquid cooled SSDs. Let me just take them both out. They are both going to be on the bottom slots. And then on the top slot, we're going to have the Sabrent Rocket one terabyte M.2. This is PCI 4.0 the liquid cooled are 3.0. So the 4.0 is going to be on this slot over there. And then the 3.0s are going to be on the bottom. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why. So the reason we're not going to have the liquid cooled in this slot over here is because later on, we're going to install our graphics card onto this slot. And that is going to cover this bit over here. And you're not really going to see that bit over here. So we are going to actually put it on the bottom slots over there so you can actually enjoy the beautiful liquid cool SSDs and put the one SSDs that you can't really see on the top over here. So let's start unscrewing these and uh, start making our way down. First, we're going to install the Sabrent Rocket 4.0 drive. So we're going to open up this screw over here and then the heatsink cover comes off. Okay. You can see that there is actual, um, yeah, like a thermal pad paste thing underneath this heatsink as well, which we are going to use, but this is too long for our SSD and we're going to need to move this uh, standoff a little bit closer. So we're going to have to move it closer over here, which is the 81. If you put the SSD over here, you can see that the next one from the top is going to be over there. But the thing is, we're not going to move this standoff, but we're going to add another standoff because this is where this, this heat sink is going to screw in over there. So we're going to need to add our standoff over there. So if you remember on our underneath our screw box over here, there is one of these standoffs. So we're going to take it out. This is going to go over there. And then we're going to screw that in. We're going to take out our SSD over here, slot it in on the side over there, push it that way. It's going to keep like pulling up or hanging out like this. And that is completely fine. Next off, we're going to need the M.2 screw, which is another little screw that came inside the motherboard box. And that screw goes inside this M.2 drive. Okay. So screw it into the standoff and that's going to hold the SSD down. Another cool thing about the Sabrent Rocket SSDs is that this looks what looks like a sticker on the top is actual heat sink as well. It's like a very thin layer of copper across that actually, you know, lets the heat go across and gets the heat 
away. So now, once this is done over there, um, there is already the screw that we sc unscrewed from this heatsink of the motherboard SSD uh, stood or stayed over here. So we're going to pull this out from here, pull this off, this cover, slot it in on that left side. Make sure it's the right way up so that the, your writing on there is one way. I don't think you can go any other way, but can you go the other way? No, you can't really. Okay, and we're going to screw it back down. Our first SSD is installed. It's all nice and safe under there. Let's open up the next one. And the cool thing about this is I don't think we're going to need this heatsink on this. So we're going to leave that one off because our SSD goes in there and it doesn't need a heatsink because it already has a heatsink on. So we're going to do the same. Take another one of those standoffs from the motherboard box. We're going to need to screw it in exactly the same place. We're going to screw it in onto the 80 hole over here. Screw it in. There we go. And now our SSD. Let's slide it in like that. Okay. And now it goes down there. Uh, let us get another one of those M.2 screws. And we're going to screw it in. This um, SSD has like a little slot. This black thing actually slides left and right. I'll show you in a moment when I screw it in. But if you can't see the screw or it's hard to screw, just move it out of the way. So let's screw that in over here. Perfecto. So this slides left and right. So I'm going to slide it backwards like that because now it covers the screw hole and a little bit this and hides it a bit more. And we have this beautiful liquid cooled, as you can see, whoa, liquid cooled SSD over there. And then the last one is over here. There is a slight problem over here, which, uh, you know, no one would have known when actually using this um, motherboard is that, so if we're going to try to put this SSD in over here, then this graphics card kind of a uh, clip over here, the bottom side of it is actually in the way. So we're going to have to somehow cut that off and um, to make this SSD go in, because otherwise we can't put it in. The rest of it is going to be go in, but it's just that little bit over there that is in the way that we're going to need to cut off. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. But the question is, how do we cut it? I'm going to do something that um, I don't recommend anyone to do, but you know, sometimes you just do whatever you need to do in order to get the job done. This over here is a tiny soldering iron, okay? And with this, I'm actually going to melt off half of this plastic shielding over here, okay? So half of this GPU kind of um, locking mechanism on this side, I'm going to have to slide it off over there, just like that over there. So when you're doing this, be extremely careful and do not touch anything else on the motherboard because you're gonna completely mess it up okay so we over here we're just gonna need to melt this plastic off over here and I'm, I'm gonna do very gently just touching this plastic over here as you can see it's slowly already melting I bet you've never seen anyone use soldering iron on the motherboard <laughs> on YouTube. I'm probably the first guy to do it. We did it. We did it. We did it. Absolutely clean job. You've never seen anyone do anything like that but basically just half of this plastic cover needed to go over here okay so when we look down over here let me give you an extra close-up over here so over here as you can see half of this is gone over here 
OK, but it looks fine, actually. But now let's see if we can fit our M.2 in there like that. OK, we can turn it back this way. And where is our M.2? Come on, please go in now. That was the sound of victory. OK, and all we have to do is screw it in there. Take the last M.2 over here, M.2 screw from the motherboard. We're going to screw that in. Boom. And our SSDs have been installed. Look at this beauty over there, OK? And to be honest, if I didn't tell you that this is melted over there, you wouldn't know. And do you know what? That's it. So next off, we're going to have to put in the cooler. We have the uh, Dark Rock Pro 4. This is going to slot somehow over here. And inside here, we have the instruction manuals and all the fittings and things like that. I'm just going to figure out how we're going to install this. By the way, if you're not going with two of these liquid cooled SSDs, you're not going to have to solder anything off or anything like that. You can have just a normal SSD over there on the bottom and then there's no problem. It's just because the actual heatsink of this cooler is so big, that's why um, it just doesn't fit. So just so you know, on the cooler bit now over here, if you know what to use, there is uh, one big pouch that has kind of three things inside. There is another pouch that says Intel on it over here which we are not going to use because we have AMD, which we have this over here, okay? And then inside the other pouch, there is this like kind of bar that goes across, across with two screws. So we are going to need this bar that go across as well as this two-in-one CPU fan kind of um, splitter thing. And there is a little bit of thermal paste. Do we trust this? Of this so um, on the AMD ones we're gonna have to install these brackets over here instead of these ones that are already on the motherboard so we're gonna have to unscrew these brackets over here so we're gonna take this out unscrew okay and then now we're gonna take both of these out so these plastic bits we're not gonna need them so we're gonna put these on the side with these four screws as well so inside uh, the AMD pouch, there is four long standoffs over here, as you can see. So there's the long ones and smaller ones. Um, the smaller ones are AM4 washers, so we're not going to use these and we don't need these because we have AM4, sorry, these are AM3 washers over there and these are AM4. So we're going to just kind of push them on top of these um, screw holes, the four of these over there. There's one side that has a bit of a bigger hole, so it goes around the screw. We're going to do that. Put all four in. If you try to put it the other way, it just won't, won't go. They can only go one way. Four. Okay, that goes in there. Now, there is these two brackets. So both of these are going to go over here. There is only one way that they can go, okay? There is AM4 socket, so they will go AM4 screw holes, which are very clearly marked. So as you can see, there is AM4 markings over there, and so the screw goes that way. Now this bracket has like kind of this um, bit going out or going up, okay? So now you're gonna mount this inside here so that the bracket is kind of facing inside towards the CPU, it's pointing towards the CPU. So if you can see this side over here, so this bracket over here is pointing inside. It doesn't go the other way, okay? Not this way, but so that the bracket is pointing towards the inside. Don't worry, even if you get this wrong and once you start applying the big cooler on, the screw holes won't align, so we're gonna go back to there. So now, once these are there, we're going to use these four black screws that came with the cooler, and we're just going to screw it into the AM4 screw holes, okay? Remember that? So now, let's take the cooler out over here. There is another little surprise that's going to come from this cooler. I'll show you in a moment. So inside the cooler, look at this. 
voila there is a screwdriver and you're definitely going to need that one because you're gonna have to go through the cooler there is like a little secret entrance through this okay so these middle ones can actually be screwed off they screw off so when you put this in you can screw your cpu in there so next thing we're going to do is use this thermal paste that came with the actual cpu the cool thing is um if you use this one it's uh, it's already got as much in as you should probably put in so if you just squeeze the lot on your cpu you will be fine the thing is in my case i don't really trust this i think it will be fine you know when you use it there will be no problem but since i have a bit of a better one and i'm doing this build for someone i'm gonna give them a bit of a better uh thermal paste industrial thermal paste You've got so much over here that this will last you a lifetime. So how much do you need? Okay, we unscrew this. And you're gonna need about a pea size. Don't put too little, but don't go mental either. It's kind of just use your common sense, but about a pea size or rice size, okay? It's better to have it, okay, just in the middle of this over here. I'm gonna just, okay, like that. As you can see, it is a little bit to the more side rather than smaller side, okay? Because this is non-conductive uh, thermal paste over here as well. Even if it goes slightly over, it's completely fine. It's worse if there's too little of it in this case over here. Take hold of your cooler, okay? Do you know what? We're going to take this fan off as well. So, let's think which way is it going to go. Be quiet. So, it's going to be the right way up. It's going to go this way, okay? So be quiet if you're looking from this side. Be quiet is going to be this way. So the text should be the same way as this Aorus Ultra over here. So now we're just going to slide it on there. But remember, there is a plastic little thing that you need to pull off underneath this cooler. So pull this one off, okay? And now you have this perfectly mirror polished thing over here. And then we're going to slot it on top of the cooler over there. So this... A little bracket that goes over the CPU and is going to pull this down okay so there's like little strips or fins or little kind of things on the bottom here I don't know what they're called like little off of cuts so the smooth size goes on the top and it can only go one way so we're just going to slot that through over here and the two screws that came in the cooler case so we're just going to put slide it from the top and oh it's a magnetic screwdriver which is quite good okay that screw started going don't pull it in we're gonna need to do the same thing on the other side both sides are going in now so now once you reach to the point where it actually starts pulling this bar down go one way and then the other way so that you're gonna like press this down equally not that you're pressing it down like this and that side because then your thermal paste is going to be squeezed right out from there you want the thermal paste to be squeezed together at the right or perfect timing or perfect not timing but just perfect way if that makes sense okay so this starts biting now going to the other side Okay, so basically, screw with confidence uh, and screw it all the way in. One way or the other, tick, 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 all the way in until you just can't screw anymore, okay? Just kind of do medium strength, turn, whatever that means, okay? And then screw it in. So now our cooler is in, okay? So the smaller fan... Whoa, where's... Okay, there we go. These clips. The smaller fan goes back to this side okay so it's quite quite simple that which way does this middle fan actually flow then um, there is little arrows on the top over here so as you can see their arrows show that it's flowing this way so like that way flows this way and it turns so basically we want the air to flow from this side all the way out towards the io shield of this motherboard over there okay so we're going to put it in and then there is the 
wire that comes down. We want the wire to come down from this side of the cooler over here, okay? So that the wire comes out in the back towards my side. There is a few more brackets that we actually need, so don't forget that, okay? We're gonna um, slide the uh, this in, and you're gonna have to slide it from this motherboard slide side because the VRAM is in the way. So both of these, you know, the fronts are the right way, and then we're gonna slide it in there. Then there is the another four brackets that was inside the cooler case over there. There's a hole on the bottom top and on the bottom, okay? And then we're just gonna kind of, let's push it as up as possible. And then push it in like that. We're gonna do the same on that side. Pull it like that. So it clips on this side and that side. And now it holds this there perfectly. So now this cooler, both of the fans are installed. What you can do now is put both of these top little screws back that go over here. It's not the easiest installation of the cooler, but do you know what? It looks cool. So now we're gonna need this uh, two to one kind of adapter over here. So put both of these fans into one, into the two sides over here. So it goes to the two sides, okay? And then this one is now going to be plugged in on the top over here. So it's clearly marked here, CPU fan. It's this gray part over here. So just a little update on the cable management of these. So both of these fans kind of, um, the coolers, cooler, uh, the fan cables, they kind of point that way. So I've pulled them both out that they come out from like the graphics card side or the bottom of the motherboard side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put these now into these two to one adapters. All right, and now with this two to one adapter, I'm going to slide it through from the RAM side, okay, over here. Okay, that is pretty good. That looks pretty, pretty neat. Okay, so as you can see over here, so go on the wide shot over here. So on this shot, you can see that the, the two cables go through okay they both go from the ram side come through the cooler if you can see no you can't so as you can see now this cable over here is attached to these both sides if you're looking on this side you guys probably can see over here we've got these two cables they're both running you know coming from this ram side hole not on the other side but the ram side hole goes through and now i'm just going to attach these over here to the CPU fan. Okay, yeah, go really close up over here. CPU fan, these, this slots in, voila, okay? So this goes over here. And now, to be honest, this looks absolutely fantastic cable management. Everything is hidden and doesn't look anything, it just looks very good, okay? If you look from this side, look, it's all clean. Look from this side, it's all clean, clean as well. Okay, we are pretty much done with the motherboard over here. Next up is putting the motherboard inside the case, which brings us to the absolute beauty. Let me present to you, ladies and gentlemen, the Be Quiet Pure Base 500 DX installation guide or manual for the case. Okay, here it is. So, before we're gonna install anything over here, we're gonna pull out all the panels. Put these thumb screws back because otherwise you might lose them. In fact, I'm going to put them underneath my fix-it case because I can, okay? Um, the top of the front cover here comes off as well. So how you do that is from the bottom, you're gonna pull it. It comes quite a lot of force. A bit like unnaturally a lot of force. Okay, it comes off with ridiculous amount of force. So I don't enjoy that a lot because it feels like you've just broken something, but you haven't, okay? 
So the front panel comes off. By the way, this is addressable LED. So be careful, there's LED connections on the other side over here. It's quite heavy as well. I'm gonna put it on the side. The front mesh over here, we're gonna take that off as well. So over here, we have the accessories box, which we're going to need as well. Take that out. And we have all of these cables over here. Now this over here is like the bay for the hard drives, which you can actually just take off by these two screws over here and you can just, you know, leave it off if you want. I'm gonna leave it on beca in because if anyone wants to, you know, add anything or things like that, they can just put them in there. There is no quick installation guides, so if you want to install them, you're gonna have to take this off, screw them in from the sides, and that's how you're gonna install them. You can see there is one fan applied on the top over there for exhaust, one on the back, and then one on the front. They are all 140 mil fans, but I want more intake, um, so I'm basically gonna balance the intake out here with another 140 fan on the front, which I have over here. So you can just buy one of these extra, and then, there we go, 140 fat mil. So these are Pure Wings 2 fans, if you're wondering what these are called. So I want this to be as high as possible so we can put another one on the top over here rather than putting one on the bottom. We just want one from the top over here. So screwdriver and unscrew these fan screws. So this goes all the way to the top as high as possible. Okay, um, this fan over here comes with a gray screws, okay? Like these silver gray screw screws. And uh, this does not fit with our build. I don't want any gray screws. It looks a little bit odd on these. So we're gonna use some of these screws from the motherboard, okay? There's like three sets of screws. And we're going to use these ones that are with a big thread. There's ones that have a massive head, okay? And we're not going to use them ones. I think these are for hard drive screws, yeah. The massive head ones over here are for hard drive screws. And then these are like the middle ones. Middle head, but big thread over here. Okay, because the fan that I bought is slightly different to the case fans. These case fans are 900 RPM case fans, whereas this one is 160, 1600 um, RPM. So we are going to swap this one out with the back fan. So this back fan is going to be the new one with high RPM, so big exhaust from the back over there. And then this back one over there is going to go in the front. And that way we're going to use the new screws over here as well. So the back fan screws are going to go with the back fan to the front and the new screws to the new fan on the fan here. Okay, sad story, it was my bad. I'm gonna have to use these uh, silver gray screws because these actually are the right size. I didn't notice that these are actually thinner size, so these won't work. So I'm gonna have to use the gray ones on the back over here. Hopefully you are not going to notice that. I remembered that when I built the Mac Pro PC, then uh, I actually had some case screws, case fan screws left, so I found four case screw fans over there, so I'm not going to use these silver ones that came with this, which is quite weird actually. Why would you give gray screws with the black fan? I don't know. Anyway, so now I have these, and then let's screw it in. So it is time for the motherboard to go into the case. Let me just check whether the standoffs of the motherboard are in the right place. So as you can see over here, there is standoffs over here. One on the bottom, one, two, three on the bottom, three in the middle with the nubbin in the middle, which is very good. And then three on the top. Let's see if this is the same situation. Okay, this is already the uh, right right placement for the standoffs. So we're going to take the motherboard screws, which are these tiny screws, 
over here that came in one of those pouches. These are the only ones with the smallest thread, so you can't really miss it, okay? So we're going to need these. You can put these on the side over here. We don't have to install the IO shield because um, that is already pre-installed on the motherboard. So what we're going to do is lift the motherboard in. So basically I'm lifting it from the cooler like that. And then, very good. Just lift it slightly, you know, push it down there. Okay. And then towards the back. There's a bit of a problem, which is that um, I think I'm going to have to install this fan afterwards because the IO shield just won't go through it. So you might have to undo the back fan to slide the motherboard in much easier because it just can't go over this standoff over there and go onto this um, into this opening in the back over here where the IO shield has to go. So we're going to have to undo this fan pull it out and we're going to put it in afterwards okay second try now okay and now it goes in perfectly that was much easier because the io shield kind of puts a little bit of a pressure on the back over here to get it in so now it's all in let's screw the motherboard in and then we can put the no, we can't put the fan back. Yes, we can. Because I'm screwing it from... Yeah, perfect. Whew. I thought I'm screwing it from that side. So screw the motherboard in and then put the fan back. Okay. Okay, see these screws? This is the smallest screw in the pile. Okay. This is not the motherboard screw, so we're going to take it out. So it's got the smallest thread as well. It's very, like, odd one out. So we're going to take this out. Then there is the one that has, like, a massive kind of head. Whoa. The one that has a massive head and then has a tiny little like ending bit over here as well like a little black side this is for the hard drives if you're going to use them and then there's the third one which leaves just this like little um hexagon head with a phillips in the middle and then a mid thread that is the ones we're going to use for the motherboards motherboard Okay, if you still have the Be Quiet screwdriver, it's going to be a big help for you because it's got a magnetic head and it's going to be so nice screwing these motherboard screws in in the back over there where you don't have a lot of room. We're going to put it back flat down. I'm not going to install the fan at the moment because I know that my... Um, CPU power that's going to go on the top over there is going to be very very hard to get to If you can see This over here and um, so if the fan is there, I can't really plug it in So I'm gonna put the fan in later over there in the back. So this is no problem over there In fact, what we are going to do next is we're going to install the graphics card and we know that there is two slots that we're going to have to remove over here. So the graphics card is going, going to go over there, like that, okay? And then it's going to take off two slots on the back over here. So the second and the third. So let's unscrew this. I'm going to take these off. And then now our graphics card, which is... Doom, 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 doom. 2080 Ti Founders Edition. Let's take it out. Look at that. So inside the case, as you can see over there, this needs to be opened, okay? Push that open over there. And then all you have to do is the graphics card is gonna slide in like that, no problem at all. All, okay? These kind of fixings over here go inside the graphics card place. A few more screws on the back over here that we need to remove before so this bit over here needs to be removed otherwise it can't go in so this let's take this one out for now and then now the graphics card can slide in that's it now we can push it in there we go our graphics card is in so in the back over here, let's put this back, which is 
quite random. Actually, I'm going to put these these screws back first. Next off, my friends, we're going to um, put the power supply in. Okay, I'm going to turn it back off. We have these extension cables as well over here. So basically, these are sleeved um, power cables for our build. And okay, there's some combs over here. And if we open this up over here, <laughs> look at these cables, my friends. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. So just so you know how these cables work, these are just extensions for your actual CPU and power supply, uh, sorry, motherboard and graphics card cables. So you're still gonna have to plug in the cables you need for your power supply. So inside the pouch, find the cables. We're gonna need one massive one for the motherboard. And it's the only one that looks different over here okay with this massive 24 pin so this goes for the motherboard take this one out then we're going to need one for the cpu okay and if you don't know which cables to use they are actually marked over here so as you can see this one over here is cpu so we're going to need to use one of these and in fact we're going to use another cpu cable as well so um, let's find another CPU cable. There we go, CPU cable two. Because these CPU cables actually detach from each other. As you can see, they detach from each other like this. And we're going to plug the four pin in over there as well. Because there's uh, eight plus four. We're gonna put this in as well. You don't actually need the four pin in as well for this to run smoothly. But because we have it, we're going to use this as well. So. Two CPU cables, one motherboard cable, and we're going to need two PCIe cables. So PCIe, as you can see over here, one, and then another one. And that should be it for now. So we're actually going to need one uh, SATA cable as well. Okay, so just to recap, we do need one of these SATA cables as well. So basically, uh, one of these six pin ones to SATA, if you don't know which one this is. It's basically this big flat one that has like a little L or bracket on the side over here. Okay, and then this six pin over here. Now, let's plug these in into our power supply. Let's undo this. So I'm going to put this comb on this cable already as well. So you take like one of these long, long ones and, and push it in. So basically on the top and bottom, you add it to the cables, which makes the cables just run absolutely like straight perfectly. And then the same way, like add the combs to the rest of the cables as well, um, if you want. I'm just going to add them towards the male side because that's where you're going to plug them in. So I would recommend you do the same. Plug them, put the, the combs all the way to the male side and then the rest of it doesn't really matter because most of it is just going to go underneath there. But you put them on the male side as well if you can. We're going to put all the combs on this side as well. I'm going to let Aaron to do it on the other side of the camera uh, and then we're going to put all these in for the power supply so it's time for me to actually uh, go down and have some tea with the family so we're going to continue this build tomorrow so a little pause over here and you know obviously there's no pause for you but there is for me okay welcome back it's a new day i've had a shave you know hair is all done nice so let's keep going with this. So with the cables here, uh, we left off, I know for you it's exactly the same, but there is two cables going for the PCIe over here. Then there's two cables going for the CPU. And then there is one cable going for the motherboard over here, but it consists of two kind of pins that go onto the PSU. And then on the other side, we have 24 pin for the motherboard. Then we're going to attach one more thing, which is the SATA cable over here. And that is actually going to be giving power for the case LED fans. Okay. So um, we're just going to plug that one in, in the peripherals over here. As you can see, peripherals and SATA, plug it into the next to the motherboard part over here. Uh, boom. And now we're in. Uh, because we have these fancy cables over here that are um, basically custom sleeved cable for the power cables. These connect 
to the original power supply cable. So if you have motherboard over here, see it connects like this and then kind of extends it, okay? If you don't want to spend extra money for these and you're just using the completely normal power supply, you're just going to use these straight and plug these straight into your motherboard, okay? And if you have these extension cables or these fancy cables, they just plug into this and you extend them, if that makes sense. Perfect. Let's start with the few of these over here. So I have put these combs in. These combs are little... Um, things that kind of make these cables go straight, not like these wonky, you know, so the cables go all nice and straight if you want to do that type of thing. But we want one of these, um, we might want another one actually for this big motherboard because we're going to have to bend this all the way around to go back inside over here. Actually, it might be, might be all right. Maybe let's put another one in. So I'm just putting another one in for this motherboard over here. What we're going to do is this motherboard sleeved cable, I'm going to put the custom sleeves in first and then we're going to connect the rest of the power supply on the other side. But if we're going to push it through over here, because this over here is the pod on the motherboard that we're going to plug it in. So I'm going to push it through over here. All right. And now and we're going to have to bend it all the way around. So feel free to either bend this cable already previously, but I'm just going to bend it around like that. Okay. Uh, when you're pushing this in, be careful not to put too much pressure in. Just try to wiggle it in so that you're not bending the motherboard too much. It is um, X570 motherboards, which means they're a little bit thicker than, you know, B450, for example. But, um, so, just be careful when you're doing that, okay? And then, you can just now play around with the combs. I think this looks pretty sick, how it looks over there. I'm going to put it down like that, because now we can hide the system fans and the back over there as well. So I'm just going to leave it hanging out from the back over there. Then next of all, we have the CPU, which is on the top over there. Basically, it's just over there in the back over there, the 8-pin over there. So we're going to push this cable through from the back hole over there, so this top bit over here. And then we're going to go on the other side and plug it in over there. So the CPU cable over here is one of these eight pins one, but there's one that can slot into two in the middle. Um, okay, there we go. If you can see over here, that is actually, you're able to slot this into two over here. So that's the CPU cable. If you don't know which one this is, don't worry. You can't actually go wrong because even though they're both like eight pin cables, the CPU one doesn't go into here. Okay, it just doesn't go in because some of them are square and some of them have like cut corners, so it doesn't go there. It only goes to one place, which is over there. So we are going to, let's do it. Let's try to plug it in over there. Let's bend it right round, right way, because that's how it's gonna have to go in. To make my life easier, I'm just gonna take these this top fan off as well at the moment. Um, I could probably like get it in without it, but the thing is, it's gonna be much easier, much faster if I just take this off because um, it is going to be quite hard to put it in there because there's just so little space. Yeah, so that's nicely done over here. Um, there is a little four pin over there as well, which we're going to put in um, now. Let me see which one is the, yeah, this CPU here. I'm gonna take one of these CPU cables out actually, because we're gonna put it, slide it back onto the CPU later. So basically there's one of these four pins. You don't have to do that, but because we have loads of cables, we have powerful power supply. We're gonna put that one in as well because we can just, uh, First of all, um, it's got a little, probably a little bit smoother, probably not make a difference, but because we can do it, we're going to do it. So basically one of these CPU cables, you know, you can open it up and it goes to two and then we're going to put it in. So four pin and eight pin are plugged in over there. Both of these GPU cables are going to go through on the bottom hole over there. So this is down, that's down, 
that's down, that's down. Okay, let's put the power supply in and then we're gonna figure out the rest of the cables. There is four thumb screws that kind of bring this bracket out, okay? Uh, which means you can now slide the power supply in from the back and not from the side, which can be helpful. So which side are we going to put the power supply up? Okay, there are two ways and in essence, it doesn't really matter. You can put the fan up or fan down. Uh, if you fan down, it's gonna pull the air from the bottom and then push it out from the backside over here. I think I said backside. Uh, and then the other option is to pull it fan up, which means it's gonna suck the air from the system over here, because there's, there's a ventilation over here. As you can see, this is not a metal thing. It's gonna suck it from there, push it down to the power supply and then out from the back which is the way we're going to go. If I'm gonna put fan down, I'm gonna have this ugly sticker that's gonna show through this fan over there, which I don't want. But what I want is to have a bit more of um, actually exhaust. So this is slightly gonna be working as an exhaust as well. It's gonna exhaust this air that's inside the case and it's gonna push it out from the back over there. So let's try to get all these cables and then we can screw in uh, the power supply over here. They have a little hexagon end over here and then Phillips in the middle. They don't have the massive head and they're not the one with the skinny screw and not the motherboard screws, just the different one, the hexagon ones, okay? Uh, sorry, these are the same as the motherboard screws are gonna go in the case, in the back of the case over here, interestingly enough. Yeah, so let's do that. I know that this 1000 watt power supply is slightly overkill for this build, but because this is going to be workstation, um, I want to be a little bit stay safe if um, the person who's going to get it is going to want to add another graphics card, for example. There would be no problem just adding another one in with that. So there's a little bit of a, like a headroom when going with this power supply. Okay, now let me turn it the other way and show you what's going on on this side. Okay, so as you can see, this is a little bit of a rat, rat's nest in here at the moment. So, where do we start? So there's the case cables. We're gonna, I'm gonna leave them up slightly at the moment. I'm just gonna put them in here for a second because, I'll show you in a moment. Um, we're gonna do the big cables first and then we're gonna see where they're gonna line up and things like that made one mistake, let's sort that out in a moment, is do you remember the four pin I put on for the CPU? Uh, it's really hard to get my hand in there now to add it from the back over here. So we're gonna have to slide the power supply out a little bit and then plug it back into the power supply. In fact, I'm gonna leave the power supply hanging out a little bit like that. All the cables are plugged in, so I'm gonna slightly push it back in. Over here, the power supply is in. So, the big bad boy over here, we're gonna try to put this cable uh, over and kind of under everything. So that's gonna come and go, whoa, inside this hard drive bay over there. And let's connect it up with this. Then we're going to have this CPU cable over there is already connected over there. And then let's put another one over here, CPU. These two connect like that. That was easy. They should, you know, really go like that as well on the side over there and then going down. Then there is the two PCIe cables. Don't put it to the last end in the chain but into the middle one, okay. It is all going to fit. We just have to fit it in there. So now the rest of these uh, cables, I'm just trying to like kind of fold up and push down there to get these out of the way, if that makes sense. Um, so we have a bit more room with the case cables over here. So we're gonna do that now.
let's open up the case fan case uh, sorry cables over here and then let's see where do these cables go before we start plugging them in so we have one SATA cable over here as you can see this over here is like one long one so if you can try to plug that one in over here first that's what we're going to do it goes to the SATA cable that we plugged into the power supply over there so let me show you close up that cable over there and this one so these will go in okay perfect and then we can kind of hide these over there as well careful with these now okay and um, next of all these these are going to plug into the motherboard okay thing i know it looks a bit messy and as much as i'd like to um do that we're gonna do them a bit later so then there is this over here which is about what, 24 pin this is usb c port case usb c over here sorry usb 3.0 not usb c usb c one is this over here like a small one um if you can look over there this is the usb 3.0 and this over here is usb c so usb 3.0 we're going to be pushing through from the middle part over here okay see usb 3.0 i'm just going to try to push it up from here so from the middle part over here and it's going to go into this hole over here as you can see so let's see there's a pin on the top over there that we're going to plug in now be careful uh, don't make it to go any like side angle make it go straight because you don't want to pin bend any of the pins there we go it is connected over there nicely connected over here but you know be a bit careful when connecting this so you're not connecting any pins on the motherboard which i have done before it can be fixed with a bit of pliers but um, it's a little bit hard to do that then we have these little little ones over here okay these tiny ones that have only small little parts these are going to go up from the hole where the um, graphics card came from so from the middle over there let me show you from the other side um okay in here they're going to come up from that part over there okay there we go there they are and then some of them have on power led power switch p led and p plus led and p minus led so they are going to go on the top row on the left over there if you have the motherboard a manual open it's quite easy to see where they go it's on page 22 and the top you can see um, paragraph 13 f panel front panel header and then we have power led plus is going to go on the top left corner minus is going to go the next to it on the top layer and then power switch plus and minus go on the top over there okay so basically if you take this power led switch slot and then it's all going to go slide into plug in plus and minus so all of these four are in and now i'm just going to tighten that cable on the other side slightly okay so it gets out of the way of the graphics card cables in here so they would look all nice and snug as you can see the front panel connector is connected over there so three more things there's one cable that has like these colorful cables on it and it says probably hd audio on it yeah there we go so this one we're going to push through on the very t bottom corner over there to go on the other side over there okay let's see comes out into there and then it's going to slide in the very bottom over there okay so see there's one pin missing that goes on the bottom corner over there so we're going to line it up and there we go that goes in there now there's one more cable that goes this one over here which is um, for the rgb led so there's like three pins and one is missing over there that is going to go through the top over here top of the motherboard and it's going to slide into this d led 2 part and then goes into there perfect just make sure that the arrow over here goes to this side over here because um, 
if you see the arrow shows where the first pin needs to be connected which is on the right side not on the left side the first pin is on the right side so two pins then missing one and then the last one is single one on the left side if you put it the wrong way um, that's apparently you can damage your RGB lights so it's best to you know fit it right and we have USB-C cable over here that is going to go into this port that is over there okay so we're going to push it through the side of where the graphics card and things they should be over here so it's gonna have to bend bend round like that and then goes in there just like that okay it doesn't have a click or anything so it just slides in um, and then we're just gonna pull that cable a bit tighter that should be fine over here don't forget the fans which I almost did so we have these two fans let's uh, mount them back on remember the one with which I bought was 16 100 RPM. Uh, I hope I can leave in the description the normal case fan as well. So the more powerful one I'm gonna put on the back over there and then the less powerful one on the top over there. So let's do it. When plugging in the fan that goes in the back over here, so this is our PWM, 160 1600 uh, rpm fan over there this is going to be plugged in on the top right corner of the motherboard and it's just underneath the power uh, the cpu power cable so it's a little bit tricky to plug in and over here you can see it as well it's it's plugged in underneath there but you know do whatever you can to plug it in i was able to kind of line the pins up like from the side putting my hand through there and then i used one of these the long um screwdriver to kind of push them push them in looking from the top th so that's how i did them now i'm going to just screw it in onto the back over that i forgot that we need to <laughs> plug in the rest of the case fans onto the cpu as uh, on the on the motherboard as well so this other top fan over there that we have so the back fan over here went into the system fan 6 part so the other very top exhaust from the top over here is going to go through this middle part over here as you can see and it's going to slot into that part over there which is system fan 6 okay so plug it in over there Okay, then we have these front case fans over here. I'm gonna open up, take all these little metal cables off. And these are going to go into system fan. Let me have a look, where are they again? Oh, on top of the graphics card and behind the motherboard, nice cables over here. And we're going to put them system fan four and two, if that makes sense over there. this other one is going to go system fan 2 over there as you can see it goes over there let's push this through there we go both of them plugged in over there fantastic now cable management so let's speed this process up just do whatever you can you know try to make them go straight and pull them down um yeah cable manage now Did you know that if you do a cable management, well, your BC gets like extra 200 megahertz on the CPU and graphics cards better. That is a joke, by the way. But uh, I'm quite happy with the cable management over here. This is now done. Now the scary thing is, is this gonna boot or not? So we're gonna do that next. We're gonna do a test boot into the keyboard port on the top. So power supply on, okay. Did anything happen? Any LEDs? Anything? I don't know. So let's hit that power button and see 
if it's going to work, okay? Hitting delete over here. BIOS has been reset. Please reconfirm the BIOS setup if needed. As you can see, over here, we have fans one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is, these are all our five fans. You know, we have two in the front over here and then two on the top. And then one of these is CPU fan over here. There we go, CPU fan and then four over here. One thing I know is these fans are extremely, extremely quiet. So what else do we have? AMD Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core, RAM 128 gigabytes. As you can see, all of these are dis detected. And here we go, it is all okay. So what you can do now is, we know everything is working. Whew, the pressure is off, it's always a bit uh, nerve wracking, no matter how many times you do that when you press the button, but everything is working. So uh, we're gonna take a little pause and then I'm gonna show you how to set up the windows and the rest of the things. So turn off your PC in the back over here, boom. And then let's set it up now. Okay, so I have put all the panels back on. I haven't taken the film out yet. I've just screwed it in, but taken the film out from the back sides so that, you know, we can pull it out whenever we want to. And another thing I want to mention again is that when you're testing or putting a monitor in, don't put it on the motherboard part, but on the graphics card part, which is further down. Now, before we're gonna install Windows, we're gonna change a few things in the BIOS. So basically, how you get into the BIOS is if you turn the computer on, start hitting the delete button. And then once you hit the delete button, you're gonna be greeted with this type of thing. Okay, you have Aorus, it's easy mode, it's quite easy thing to do. So what, what you can see over here, you know, that you've got um, your processor, your RAM, your boot drives, you know, we have three drives working. We've got the um, graphics card here on the PCIe X16 slot, which is the top one over there. There's nothing on the X8 slot, which is the second one over there. And then nothing on the, on the X4 slot and so on. So what we wanna do is go to the smart fan setup over here. And then here is the CPU fan and things. So you can choose the fans over here. These are related to the port that you plug them in on the motherboard. So uh, we plugged in CPU fans from the CPU fan port over there. So when we selected this, we're controlling the CPU fans over here. I've already made a little bit of a different curve over here and um, just to kind of go that or when it reaches, I don't know, 66 degrees, um, then we are going to 100 degrees. OK, we're about 70 percent when we're 59 degrees. Actually, we'll put 100 percent when we're at 70 degrees because that's um that's fine you know the fan speed to keep it a bit quiet things like that so now when we go further down over here there are a few things we want to do that if you can't adjust the fan curve over here and um, you're gonna have to press this to manual instead of normal over there okay then the fan control use temperature input is the cpu okay whatever the cpu temperature is so that's going to be like the reference um temperature if you if you want to do that so basically the input of the temperature over here is cpu so it's reading the cpu temperature temperature intervals over here there is um three whatever i'll just leave that one over there cpu fan control mode now this is quite important there because sometimes this can cause issues you can leave it on auto i would recommend you to choose the right option for whatever this is our cpu fans are pwm fans so now if you don't know which fans do you have or your case or your cpu has that basically works like this if it's four pin four pin uh, fan pot or hole you know if, if your fan has four holes in there, four wires going in there, it's a PWM, okay? And if it's got three, then it's voltage one, okay? So because we know this goes into the CPU fan over there and I can read, you know, le um, count the wires one, two, three, four, it is a PWM over there. Uh, CPU fan stop, this is disabled, so you don't want them to stop. If I put enabled, then the CPU fan stop, okay? But we want it disabled. Then there is a CPU fan fail warning. We're gonna put that enabled and tip it to temperature. I've put like a warning over there when it reaches 90 degrees, cause that's quite hot over there. Now let's go to the next one. 
Next one is system fan one, which is the top part over there where we plugged in our back fan, which was, you know, the high speed fan with four pins there as well. So over there, remember to choose PWM, which I have already done, set it to manual, and we're gonna put it that if it reaches about 72 degrees, then it's gonna start blasting out full speed, all the air exhausting it out from the back. So that's that. The rest of the curves, I'm gonna make it quite like smoothly going up, because it doesn't need to be um, very high when the temperatures are lower. Um, we don't need to put the fan fail warning on here because these are case fans. So now we know that there is the top exhaust fan is plugged into system fan six. So if you don't know which one is which, you can use your motherboard guide over here. And on page 15, you can see every single like port what it's actually labored. So if you can't see it inside the actual case, then you can see that, okay, down there, it is number five, which is system fan five pump or system fan six pump. Okay, so that is the down. This is the top fan over there. If you remember, if you've uh, put it down um, the same way. So we're gonna put press this manual uh, CPU, the fan, on pump control mode is going to be voltage, okay? Because this is a three pin one now, so we're gonna leave it to voltage. And we're gonna let this go 100% when it reaches 70 degrees as well. And then we're gonna leave it like slowly curving up all the way to there, something like that. This is our top fan over here now, okay? And then we have the front two fans over there. Let's configure them as well. So the two ones over there have been plugged into system fan two and four, okay? So let's check this here as well. We're gonna go to manual, temperature input. We're gonna put CPU actually as well. CPU input as the control input. Uh, system fan, we're gonna go to voltage because it is the voltage fan, okay? It's three pin one. And we're gonna put this to go 100% about 70 degrees as well. And we want there to be a bit more curved in. So there we go, curve like this. And now there is a cool thing over here that if, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply the same thing to system fan four, because we are system fan two, as you can see, and I'm gonna apply it to system fan four as well. So I'm gonna get exactly the same configuration to port of both of these. A front fans over there and click OK. So now when we go to system fan 4, boom, you can see it's exactly the same, except the control mode is going to be voltage. OK, oh, system, let's put that to CPU as well. Manual voltage. OK, so that but the fan curve is going to be the same. So when you go two and four now, it's exactly the same. Fan one temperature input, we're going to put CPU as well. So all of them read the CPU input whatever temperature the CPU is going to be. Okay, now when we're done, we're gonna press escape and we're gonna go and press escape again, which is gonna say exit without saving. And uh, no, we want to save and exit, which is over here, down here. Save and exit, F10, we're gonna save, are you sure? We're gonna save and exit, yes. So all of these fan curves and everything is going to do that. Now, it's gonna restart and things like that, but now you need the USB stick with the windows on. And if you don't know how to do that, uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description as well. If I've forgotten, please remind me in the comment section below. But basically, it's very easy to do. Um, and this is going to install the windows. So how you're going to do that is um, I'm going to turn this on off at the moment now. So you can hold on the power button. And then we're just going to plug in the USB end to the, one of the back ports on the motherboard over there. Turn it back on. And watch, it's going to recognize that this is the Windows is plugged in and we're going to install the Windows over here. Just a quick little update over here. Um, it looked like uh, what was wrong with the USB, it wasn't working over here there and the Windows automatic kind of boot wasn't coming up. But uh, the problem was that basically you have to plug in the USB drive onto the top ports where the you know keyboard and mouse are the top very top on top of these wi-fi antennas none of these usb 3 ports were working so basically that's now the windows 
installation part. I recommend doing the Windows installation without the internet connected to the computer, that is like with the Cat5 cable, so that basically you can skip a lot of it and it's not gonna ask a lot of questions and you can do the rest all later. I'm not gonna show you like how we're gonna install the Windows and things like that, you can watch one of my other main builds, you know, where I'm gonna go more in depth over there with uh, how we're gonna install the Windows and things like that. So we're gonna install our Windows onto the main one terabyte hard drive, which is this one here. So we're gonna do that one and press next. By the way, I'm using this El Pao, Li Pao um, monitor over here, which is actually very interesting. It's a 15 inch monitor over here. It's connected by, it, it powered up by a USB port, USB-C port, just from a power bank, I'm actually running this. And then the rest of this just connected to my uh, computer PC, which is pretty cool. I'll leave it in the description if you're, if you're interested, but you can basically do a lot of gaming and all sorts of stuff like that. So now once you are in Windows, it is worth actually uh, kind of using, plugging your computer into the internet and um, yeah, get some things installed. So if you can get some ethernet cable and plug it in so you can uh, do some updates on the internet, I'm gonna show you what to do. First thing you want to do when you are in Windows is you're gonna go to um, press the Windows key and go updates. Oh, check for updates. And we're gonna let Windows do its updates first, okay? Um, so we're gonna check for updates and it's gonna do loads of updates restart update again so do this as many times if it says all up to date click, click on this button it says check for updates check for updates check for updates until it's completely done because even if it says up to date and you click on it then it's going to find some other updates um, and it's going to do that as you can see in a moment it's going to get loads of these look at that all of these need to be done it's actually going to um install even uh, maybe a new version of the windows i'm not sure of which um version of windows 10 is here which build so it's going to do that as well so okay my friends so what has happened is i've done loads of windows updates you know gone all and actually went to the next windows build as well i think it's 2004 version build so that is all done now so when i go to updates over here you can see it's all up to date. So now a few things you want to install when doing this, okay? So first of all, one of the first things I do is get rid of that Microsoft Explorer. Get, get yourself Chrome, that's one of my favorite browsers. And then let's start downloading some of the drivers, okay? Um, in no particular order, you can download them. So first of all, you're gonna need a GeForce Experience, okay? Go to GeForce Experience or type in Google NVIDIA GeForce Experience, download that program and I am installing it at the moment over here. It's almost done. And basically this is going to do, be giving you drivers for your graphics card over here. So once you have logged in either with Google or Facebook or somehow made an account over here, when you go to drivers on the top over there, Okay, skip because I know how it works. You go to drivers over there and then now we're gonna see, um, you can choose whether you want game ready driver or studio drivers. So basically because this PC is mainly going to be used for studio and creative work, we're gonna go for studio driver. We're gonna go and next, we're gonna download this and install the uh, studio driver over here. And basically this program is gonna keep you up to date with the latest studio drivers and things like that. So once the NVIDIA is installing, there's a few other things we're going to want to do. First of all, we're gonna to go to AMD and amd.com and then there's drivers support somewhere. We're gonna to go to chipsets and you're gonna to go to AMD socket AM4 and then X570, we're gonna go submit because our motherboard is um, X570. And we're going to see um, Windows 10, 64-bit uh, version. We are going to download this chipset drivers. You can leave that in the background. AMD RAID installer. So if you're using like, are going to be using hard drives in RAID or things like that, you might wanna do that. But um, in our, you know, way of doing things uh, there's not going to be a raid so i'm not going to install that so chipset installation over here uh amd riser power plant yes we want that amd pci device driver amd psb driver all of these drivers yes we want all of them 
Okay, let it install the chipset drivers. Uh, it might need a restart or whatever. So another few things. So there is Heaven Benchmark. If you want to do your GPU benchmark, then this is one thing. It's downloading there at the moment for me uh, to do a benchmark on this one. Another thing, cool thing is core temp programs where you can monitor your temperatures of your CPU, different cores and things like that. Uh, let me show you over here. I've already installed it. So over here I can see um, all the what frequency the cores are going, but also I can see the power draw of the CPU. I can see the max temperature and minimum temperature and current temperature, which is very nice over here to see. And just if you want to monitor how your you know system's doing. So basically what I'm going to do Cinebench benchmark in a moment, uh, I'm going to be looking at this core temp scene, how the cores are, like, where they clock into, what the power draw is going to be, what the temperatures are going to be, just to see if my cooler and everything's working fine. And next you want, might want to get something called Ryzen Master. If you're going to do some overclocking, minimum slight overclocking or whatever, then this might be a nice thing for you to get as well. As we can see, the chipset uh, software is been installed. It wants to do a restart. I'm not going to do a restart until the Nvidia driver has been installed as well. And while we've done that, uh, you also should be going to type in Aorus X 570 Aorus Ultra, then under the support tab, you can go to downloads. Basically, there's different things you can download over here, different drivers that you're going to be wanting to do. So I'm going to do a restart over here because some of the installations over here needed a restart. But once I'm doing it, actually hit the delete as well when you are in the boot, because there is one more thing in the BIOS that we actually want to turn on, which is the XMP profile for the memory, because our RAM at the moment is running at 26667 megahertz, I think, uh, or no, 2672 megahertz, whatever. So what we want to do is we're going to want to go to easy mode. There we go. Our uh, RAM over here, we're going to go to XMP profile one. Perfect. As you can see, 3200 megahertz. We're going to go save and exit. Are you sure? Yes, of course, I am sure. And that's it. So on the Gigabyte website, it would be awesome if you installed like few utilities. Okay, when you press on the utility, okay, there is, you can see there is RGB Fusion. If you're going to download that to control the RGB on your motherboard and things like that. And then we have App Center over here. So RGB Fusion at the moment. Another thing we're going to do over here is if you go to Windows and you're going to type in Power plan if you edit power plan and then we're going to go back to power option on the top over here and we can see that there's a Ryzen balanced power plan over here at the moment we're going to change to Ryzen high performance okay so we are on Ryzen high performance to give like the most power for our CPU now to see how our CPU is performing it would be nice to do a Cinebench score to see if everything is working well core temp over here just to see what's happening over here and let's have a look at our CPU here on task managers as well. Let's go back to Cinebench, run it, core temp and task manager up so we can see. Okay, we're drawing 130 watts of power, 131 watts of power, clocked at 3.98 gigahertz. Our temps are at 65 degrees. Okay, let's have a look. 9,286. I'm happy with that. It is time to finish off this build with... So here's how to set up the RGB Fusion, how to calibrate these RGB LED lights over here on this machine, on the front and on this strip, so they both act together. So basically, once you have installed the RGB Fusion, open it on your Windows, Just go RGB Fusion, we we'll open that. Yes, we want to make differences. Okay, let it load up. This is like already the sync mode. Not sure because I have already done this. So if this doesn't look like this to you or you see something like that, you know, like a motherboard straight away, then you can see on the side over here, the sync mode. And then if you click on the um, motherboard, then you can see the different bits on the motherboard where you have like something plugged in or things like that. As you can see over here, the digital LED over here is where we plugged in the RGB on the top right corner over there. So you want to click on that over here. When you click on that, suddenly we are changing the RGBs over there. As you can see on the bottom right corner over here, there's calibration 
over here, which we're going to have to do. If you're going to change your RGB and the colors like you go to yellow, but some of the strips look a bit different than on the motherboard, it's because the case kind of RGBs have to be cali cali calibrated. C -c 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 calibrated. So click on calibration. So now, basically how this works is, you can see there's gr blue over here. So you click, yes, it's showing blue. Now it's showing red. So as you can see, we're going to click on red. And now it shows green. Boom. And now the calibration is complete. So basically it knows which channel is green, red, and um, blue. So now it knows what to do. So basically now when you go to sync mode, we can go to all these different colors, as you can see. And it just follows that, or you can change the you know, colors. This is white, red, yellow, orange. We're going to leave it to orange. And obviously, you've got these loads of different modes over here you can play around with. But I'm going to leave it on pulse and orange because that's just the best for this build. Last thing over here, which is this uh, Wi-Fi antenna. And there's some fighters flying over us at the moment outside. So let's put this Wi-Fi antenna in and then we are all done over here. You know, putting this in is basically very, very simple. Put that on the top over there and then screw these in in the back. There's only one way you can go. It doesn't matter which one goes to which way. Just kind of plug them in over there and there you go. You're all done. Okay. This is done now and now we have Wi-Fi. So let's do a little bit of an overview of what we have done. So we've, we have built an absolutely beast of an editing machine, okay? This is meant for creation work. And this is what I think is probably the best like Ryzen workstation money can buy at this point. Now you can argue and say that for the GPU, we could actually put, you know, a 3080 or 3090 in and you can actually, but I'm gonna make a whole other video about this so stay tuned for that because this is only part one of the video, how we all built this and how the setup goes and everything like that. But this is what I believe is an absolutely beast, beast of an editing machine. So what we have here, all the programs installed as well. So you have NVIDIA, chipset drivers, go to the Oros App Center and then you're going to download this so you can get all the latest like audio drivers and gigabyte LAN internet and Wi-Fi drivers and everything like that. That's going to keep it up to date as well. If you go to live update, that's going to keep it up to date. If you want to do them manually you can also do them manually over here if you go if you go Aorus Ultra X570 then on there on the support we go to drivers and then there's all these things manually you can download as well the audio drivers but it's already done that chipset LAN SATA Bluetooth and Wi-Fi it's already updated so we don't need any of that so my friends, thank you very much guys for watching. If you have any other questions leave a comment below. Hope uh, this was the uh, build where you can actually you know you can see how this build was done learn you know or build this completely yourself remember all the links for all these parts that i'm using are in the description if i forgot anything in the description please let me know in the comment section below hit the like button it would absolutely make a massive difference and i would love if you would do that subscribe if you haven't already and see you in the next one thanks for watching over one hour of editing video here you're awesome see you soon Bye. It's not moving around anymore. Moves it around. <laughs> uh, we have like something straight going down over here. And then, yeah, it looks looks good. Looks very good to me. Um, still adjust things.